Hello, and welcome to episode two of A Book in a Dream. Today, I want to talk to you about my epic love of Harry Potter and how J.K. Rowling has changed my life yet again. Before we jump into that, I wanted to let you all know first a quick little update on my writing life. Wrath and Wing, the prequel novella for my new Anna of Il Brea series, is now available to download for free on basically every ebook platform. I think I hit them all. If you find one that Wrath and Wing is not on, let me know and I'd love to hop on over there. Also, Wrath and Wing is available as a very cool little miniature paperback and is my first foray into large print. So that's pretty neat. Check those out. The first book in the series, Ember and Stone, is out December 26th. So I'm very excited about it. But in the meantime, check out Wrath and Wing. Now, I was a little bit late hopping on the Harry Potter Hogwarts Express. I didn't start reading the books till I was 16, which for my age group is about three, four years late. So I hopped in late and I instantly fell in love. It was book three had just come out when I started reading the series. From there on out, every midnight book release I was there. Every midnight movie release, I was there. Actually, when book seven came out, I was working living history in Newport, Rhode Island. And my boss actually scheduled me the next day so I could binge read. I finished the books in less than 24 hours, thanks to uh, that wonderful boss. He wins boss of the year for that. Thanks, Patrick. And then time went on. There was no new Harry Potter. Then the wizarding world of Harry Potter appeared. And of course, I went and sobbed like a baby and went to Ollivander's. And you know you're an epic fan when you're in a room of children and the worker at Ollivander's chooses you for the wand experience. A wand chose me. Yes, I have it. It was amazing. And then we get Fantastic Beasts and we get Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Now, I heard Harry Potter and the Cursed Child was coming out, and unfortunately, at the time, did not have the ability to just hop on a plane to London and see the show. So I went to Barnes & Noble at midnight and picked up the book of the script, devoured it, loved it, still didn't really have the ability to hop on a plane to London. So that was sort of my Cursed Child experience for a while. Well, they have recently been having some excellent discounts on tickets to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway. So I snagged some tickets, super excited about it. Because I am an actor and I am an author, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is such an awesome intersection of the two art forms that are my life. So I was almost a little nauseous going into the show because I was so excited about it and so terrified I would be disappointed. I really didn't know how to handle my emotions anymore. But it was amazing. It was fantastic. They, I, don't worry, there's going to be no spoilers. I hate spoilers. Promise. Nothing. You can keep listening. It's safe. But they renovated the inside of the theater specifically for the show. It is completely immersive. From the moment you walk into the theater through the show, all the way out, it is completely the world of Harry Potter. And it's amazing. And the tech for the show is phenomenal. I, I'm i in theater. I'm in professional theater. I've spent my life doing this. And there are some things that I they pulled off that I'm not really sure how they did it. And it's pretty impressive if you can stump me on stage. It was a phenomenal experience. And one of the best parts was how different the audience base was. I've seen a lot of Broadway shows and they're sort of the same like standard crowd you're going to see. But this was true Harry Potter fans. It was a different demographic, a different age group, a completely different vibe. And it was amazing to see so many Harry Potter fans come together through an art form that I have made my career at that has been my life and my dream since I was three. And it kind of gave me a new and strange life goal. So when I first started writing, my goal was just to be a published author. And then the goal became to get an agent. And then there was all the uh, publishing trauma that we talked about in episode one. Check it out if you haven't already listened to it already. And after that, the goal became to get my work out there. The goal has become to make a full-time living out of writing. And then stacking on that, there are other goals 
like become a New York Times bestseller, get a Netflix original series, those sorts of things. But after seeing Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, the new goal has been to have a book of mine turned into a Broadway show and have that show win a Tony Award. So part of that is because it would be really cool to sit in the house at the Tonys and have them reading the things. And then I get to wear a pretty dress and go up on stage with the cast and smile while the producers say things. And that would be amazing. But it's also because, well, the Tony helps drive audience members to the show. So then more people would get to absorb one of my stories in two art forms. And that would be so cool. It's this perfect intersection between the two things that I love so much. But it's kind of a weird goal. So I'm not really sure how to start on that, what to start on that. Where do I go? So recently there have been at least three Broadway shows based on young adult novels. There's Be More Chill. There is The Lightning Thief based on the Percy Jackson series. And of course, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child based on Harry Potter. Then there's even a Broadway show that went the other direction and became a novel afterwards, Dear Evan Hansen, which is super cool that it went the other direction. That's kind of amazing. So there is a market for it. There's a way to do it. But what's the pathway? I've written lyrics before and wrote a kid's show. It's called Princess Camp the Musical. Check it out. But I don't necessarily want to write the show to be on Broadway. I want to write the book for someone to write the play for to be on Broadway. How does one do that? I'm not really sure. I mean, obviously, I have to keep producing work and keep producing good work so that there is something worthy of the Broadway show. I'm not sure if any of my current books, while they'd make great Netflix original series, would necessarily make a good musical just because of the scope of them. It might be weird to have people singing about a dystopia with chemically induced vampires. I don't know. It could work. In my head, it's it's a little weird. So do I focus on writing books that would make good musicals? Do I go and stop performing for a little while so I can take workshops on writing musicals? So even if I don't write it, I make more friends who write musicals. These are the things that I've sort of been questioning for the past little while since I saw Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how this changes the five-year plan, the 10-year plan, because if I want to have a Broadway show written based on one of my books on Broadway in 15 years, that means we need to start musical workshops in 10 years. So this has sort of bumped the timeline up. And I'm going to have to do a lot of research as to how to make this happen, but I'm going to make it happen. So stay tuned because it's going to be exciting. Not sure what this journey is yet, but it's going to be great. And I just want to take a moment before I sign off here to say how epic it is that J.K. Rowling has changed so many lives in so many ways. Not only did she inspire an entire generation to keep reading and create jobs with theme parks and Broadway musicals and everything else, but she's inspired so many people to write, to write in fantasy, and now me to write in fantasy to create a Broadway show off what I wrote in fantasy. So that's kind of amazing. And that's the sort of influence that art can have in book form and in musical form and in TV, painting, everything else. And that's really cool. That's an amazing amount of influence for an artist to have over so many people in the world. That's great. If you have a story about how Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, any other YA book or piece of art has changed your life, drop a comment below. If you happen to know how to get a book changed into a Broadway musical, also drop a comment below or reach out to me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, all those things. Don't forget to like or subscribe depending on your preferred platform. And as always, thank you so much for joining me for A Book in a Dream.